Welcome to the Worst Sports Channel on YouTube, Hot Garbage Sports with me, Coach Ryan D. Wheelhouse Hockey, Facebook, social media sites, Twitter, blowing up. They're leaking the Seattle Kraken draft picks. Is this a troll? Are these players real? Who knows, but I've consolidated it from one of the most reliable sites that I use for inside NHL rumors and notes. I've made one nice list for you all to see the picks that I've seen that come through so far. So let's go ahead. Let's get into it. Let's review this list ahead of the official draft that takes place tonight for the Seattle Kraken we will get confirmation on whether or not this list and other rumors that are flying around are true so for the next couple hours let's feed that Kraken fix and see what we got roll the intro Here's All right, so let's go ahead and let's fire up that list right now. So we've got Hayden Fleury from the Anaheim Ducks. We got Tyler Pitlick from the Arizona Coyotes. We called Jeremy Lousen right from the Boston Bruins. Nice young defenseman. I haven't seen anything in yet from the Buffalo Sabres. We got Mark Giordano. We called that one for the Calgary Flames. Hopefully and likely their first captain, but maybe they'll be like Vegas and wait a couple years. Then we got Morgan Geeky coming in from the Carolina Hurricanes. Who saw that wrong? People were roasting me for picking Jake Gardner from the Carolina Hurricanes because Jake Bean was the easiest pick. And well, if Morgan Geeky turns out to be the pick, we were all wrong. And like I said on my last video, when it comes down to NHL scouting and general managing, nobody does it better than the actual scouts or general managers. So these are really fun exercises and whatever list you made or I made, it's just a great thing to talk about. Just a couple buddies talking in the basement, right? So let's keep going. Chicago Blackhawks. I'm hearing it's Joel Quinville. He's not on this list yet, but I hear it's Quinville. Colorado Avalanche is Donsky. We got that one right. I think a lot of people did. The Columbus Blue Jackets, Gavin Beruther. Didn't see that coming. Definitely thought it was going to be Max Domi. Jamie Oleskiex from the Dallas Stars. The Dallas Stars didn't really have much to choose from. Um, I'm surprised that they didn't go with uh, more goaltenders than they did in this list, but let's keep going through it. Detroit Red Wings, we don't see anything yet. The Edmonton Oilers, Adam Larson signs as an unrestricted free agent. That's a really nice defenseman to bring over to there. Chris Drieger, the goalie that was first rumored to move over, comes in, and I believe he is being slated in as the starter. He's coming in at, I think, uh, an average cap hit about $3.5 million, they said. So Drieger from Winnipeg, Manitoba, our guy. And you know what? Speaking of being from Winnipeg, Manitoba, liking guys from Winnipeg, Manitoba, we hope you like this video. Drop a quick like, subscribe. We'd love to have you here in hot garbage sports land. All right, let's keep going. Curtis McDermott from the Los Angeles Kings ends up moving over there. Again, a little bit surprising for me. Minnesota Wild, Carson Saucy. Well, spread that sauce all over the ice there, gentlemen. That was a, that was a pretty easy pick, I think. A very solid defenseman. So a lot of people had him on their list. Another flurry in Kale Flurry from the Montreal Canadiens. I'm shocked. Habs Nation, are you shocked? Defenseman picked in the third round. There was Paul Byron. There was Carey Price. There's a lot of different options there. I know a lot of people are going to be saying, hey, you didn't pick Price. Don't worry. We're going to talk about him in a second. Carl Yannick. Yannick. Carl Yankrock, sorry, sometimes my European names, they get away from me. From the Nashville Predators, we had Sissons here. I was also curious if they were going to take one of the big centermen in Duchesne or in Johnson, and I know they've had some rough years and they had a big cap hit, but I figured maybe they would try to establish themselves with a big number one center. Nathan Bastien from the New Jersey Devils. Jordan Eberle is the pick from the New York Islanders, and I'm pretty sure Islanders fans on this channel are thrilled because Josh Bailey gets to stay. I think Bailey's a better player, but Eberly is so close and he's a goal scorer. So I totally understand that this isn't a bad pick at all. And I think Islanders fans are probably pretty happy about this considering it's not Josh Bailey. You let me know down below. Rangers don't have a pick through yet. The Ottawa Senators, Joey Decord, we called that as well. Nice little young goalie to come into the system. Let's see where he fits in for the Kraken behind Chris Drieger. And then we have Carson Tawarnsky. Tawarnsky. Not sure. Not really familiar with him from the Flyers. Really interesting that JVR and a couple big players were available, but it really does look like they are keeping as much cap space as possible open. So maybe that leads to a few signs that they're going to sign some big free agents. But again, we'll get into the strategy in a second. So let's keep going through the list. Uh, Brandon Tanev, great checker to come in from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Nice contract on him too. I loved him from the Winnipeg Jets. He's definitely a Ron Francis guy. Lots of block shots. Alexander True comes in from the San Jose Sharks. That shocked me. 
Very, very shocking on that pick. Vince Dunn from the St. Louis Blues. The Tarasenko dream is dead. Yanni Gord from the Tampa Bay Lightning. You couldn't really go wrong with whoever you picked from the Tampa Bay Lightning. So you go ahead and lock up your centerman. I understand that. I would have taken Palat if you were going to take a veteran. But again, maybe they'll end up getting another player from Tampa Bay to help relieve them from some of their cap troubles. We'll see. The Toronto Maple Leafs make a trade for Jared McCann. And Jared McCann is picked. Oh, well. I mean, that's the way it goes. It, it prevents Alexander Kerfoot uh, from walking away. So you keep a little bit of depth down the center. So Leafs fans, tell me how you think you feel about that one. Definitely. Uh, I, I think it's definitely good for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Very low price to keep your team intact. Uh, Cole Lind from the Vancouver Canucks. We called that dumpster fire of a pick because there's really not much to pick from the Canucks. It's a little bit surprised they didn't go with Holtby just because he has a short contract and be a good one-two punch with Drieger. But here we are. Uh, Vanacek here from the Washington Capitals. A lot of interesting options from there. Definitely didn't see that one coming. And then Mason Appleton from the Jets. We called that. I figured the potential for scoring uh, with Mason Appleton was just going to be too much to turn down. Uh, even with Dylan DeMello being out there, Mason Appleton could actually end up being a reasonably special player. So there you have it. That is our list. It looks like they're aggressively following what what he said in his tweet, what he being Ron Francis said, that cap space is the most valuable thing in today's NHL. Looks like they're building a team for the future. To me, this isn't a team built like the Golden Knights where they got a lot of nice ads and, they're, and they really made an aggressive play to try to win now and, and they've been in a winning window now for three to four years this looks like a, an exercise more built around cap and and, a, and around the future but the interesting thing is is we're not done yet there there's trades to be made still there's still free agency plays uh the vegas golden knights the hockey guy did a very excellent video breaking down where the players at that the vegas golden knights selected an expansion and a lot of them aren't with the vegas golden knights anymore so they really use that expansion as a tool to build their team. And I expect the Seattle Kraken are doing similar here. Let's talk goalies for a minute. Goalies. So you end up going with some, some really cost effective up and coming young goalies hoping you hit. That's a very interesting strategy. Um, I definitely do believe in the fact that one of the bigger names should have been taken in, in my thought. But again, this is a coach telling you this. I, I'm not a general manager. And as a coach, I always want that reliable, tried, tested and true way to help me win. And building from the net out is a really big deal in doing that. So, yes, they don't take the albatross. That is the carry price pick. Maybe they did get scared away by the injury. I know there was a lot of people in the NHL, fans, Twitter, all talking about it that you know, they didn't really like how the Montreal Canadiens operated. And all I have to say to those folks is tough. Mark Bergevin played the system beautifully, just like the Tampa Bay. Lightning played the system beautifully with Nikita Kucherov. There's always game theory to be done in the NHL. So really nice job by the Habs being able to protect both guys. I think the interesting call about that is that the Habs will still have a chance next year, especially having Carey Price. I know a lot of... People in Habs fan and Habs land are talking about the fact they didn't have a good regular season. Throw the regular season out of there. It's all about the playoffs. So if he can repeat what he did in the playoffs again, you're going to be in great shape. Put him on LTIR for a little bit as you clean him up with a little cleanup scope surgery, which is what I'm predicting he's going to end up getting. No confirmation. I'm not a doctor. Don't take medical or financial advice from this channel. But I think as he comes back closer to the playoffs, Jake Allen carries you through and then Carey Price can come back just in time for the playoffs, hopefully or midway through the season. So that leaves Habs fans and Habs land in, in reasonable shape, even if Shea Weber is um, facing career threatening injuries. We know he's out for the year. Philip Deneau walking away from the, the Montreal Canadiens is going to be harsh. Uh, we called that on this channel 12 weeks ago. People were really high on Deneau for the playoffs as they should be. But you could see it. The fact that he turned down a lucrative contract last January just really told a lot of us. I think that uh, Montreal wasn't in his long-term plan. Uh, there are rumors that he's signing uh, a reasonably big deal to go to the Seattle Kraken. Uh, I don't know how true that's going to be, to be honest. Uh, we'll end up seeing uh, when free agency opens for the Kraken and, and for everybody else uh, where Philip Deneau goes. I don't know what's on his list. Is it to get paid or is it is it to win a Stanley Cup? So we'll end up seeing where he's going. He's definitely one of the bigger, if not the biggest prize in terms of the center position and then Dougie Hamilton's definitely the biggest prize with all the free agents that are floating around right now so going to be a really interesting offseason let me know what you think about this list I wanted to get it out before the draft so we got six hours to speculate comment and see where we're going thanks for being here with me we'll catch you tonight